It's the Late Night Revolution live across the UK. And on this show, we like to talk to funny, entertaining, gorgeous people. And my God, are we joined by one today. Joe Brand, how are you? Well, I don't know if I'm funny, entertaining and gorgeous. Well, two Hopefully, out of three. Yes. One, I mean, what are you saying? Do you have some kind of issue with your appearance? I mean, I find no, you gorgeous. No, no, just not funny. Gorgeous and entertaining. Not Why funny. not funny then? Because, I mean, <laughs> everybody seems to have you on, don't they? If there's any show where you need to be funny, bring Joe Brand in. Well, that's very reassuring to know. <laughs> it must be a compliment. Now, let's talk about your past. Because, first of all, I've done my research. Tarquin's been spending hours looking on the internet about you. And apparently you were a nurse originally, so that's nice. Uh, but we can't say certain words on the radio. So anything gynecological, if we could leave that out. Indeed. Um, you can't say piles, uh, ladies' parts or ladies' problems, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay, at least we know where we are. That's the most important thing. And also, as a psychiatric nurse, those parts don't become available to you very often. Really? How disappointing. Well, it didn't disappoint me. <laughs> I was quite pleased not to see men's and ladies' parts on a regular basis. You see, I wouldn't want to be in the medical profession if I didn't get to have a laugh at that occasionally. No, so not a budding gynaecologist then. No, I've always wondered what gynaecologists look for in a woman, really. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? It is cerebral, <laughs> I, I suspect. Let's talk about your tour and things more, more pleasant, because you've been selling out up and down the country, and I've heard rumour about your show that it's actually quite funny, which is nice. Thank you very much. Only quite funny. Well, no, no, very funny. I mean, they didn't walk out. <laughs> what more can you ask for? I think so. Not to be booed off and for no audience to leave prematurely is actually what I'm aiming for on this tour. <laughs> Do you have a wacky name for it, by the way? For my tour? Mm. No. Because everybody does that now, don't they? They do, and everyone has a website, apparently, and I've not got one of those either. Do you really like what you do, Joe? Because I get the feeling your heart's not really in it. No website, no showbiz names for your tours. I mean, what's going on? I love doing stand-up. I don't like all the kind of attendant hoo-ha that goes with it. <laughs> it. Do you know what I mean? It's like people that go on tour and endlessly in a nerdy way sort of prepare a rather sort of fantastical set for their for their comedy gig, which is actually just telling jokes. And uh, we were talking about Lee Evans the other day, and I think he took a grand piano around with him on one tour for one joke that lasted 10 seconds, possibly. <laughs> and I admire him for that, because I just could not be bothered. <laughs> do you play the piano? I do play the piano extremely badly, a bit like Les Dawson used to play the piano. I don't know if you remember that. Absolutely. I mean, he got big laughs. Why don't you try it? Because Les Dawson's done it already, and everyone would just go, oh, he's copying Les Dawson. <laughs> So what is it then? Just a black cloth and a microphone, that's it? That's it, yeah. You're incredibly brave for two reasons. One, because I don't want to do stand-up comedy anyway. I like doing it here, where if you don't laugh, I can edit it out and no one will know. But you're standing in front of all these people who are going to go, right, make me laugh, and they're judging you on that. I mean, you must have incredible confidence. How, how do you actually get out on that stage? Well, initially I got out on stage by consuming vast amounts of alcohol, so I was inured to any criticism from the audience. <laughs> and then once I'd done that a few times, I just gradually cut down the alcohol and eventually did it sober, by which time I'd done it so many times I wasn't nervous anymore. Is there any trepidation with you now, or are you so confident in your material and in the act that you don't need to worry? Oh, no, no, not at all. I mean, I am anxious, but I've managed to kind of condense it down into about half an hour before the show, whereas when I started, it was like two weeks before, which is obviously quite ha hard to handle in your daily life. Is it harder being a woman and being a comedian? No, I don't really think so. I mean, I think a lot of women think it is and that's why they don't do it. But actually, it's just as hard for the blokes because it's just as heartbreaking if you're a bloke and you get no laughs or booed off. It seems to me if you're a lady and you're a comedian, you're going to be huge. I mean, you've only got to look at Victoria Wood yourself. I saw Jeannie Yashira, is that her name? That's her name. I saw her in the comedy store last week who literally took the place down. I went to see someone else, I won't mention his name, and he didn't get half the laughs that she did. It seems like if you're oh, female... On, tell us who it was. Alan Carr <laughs> and I mean I, I, he's great he came in on the show and he was hysterically funny and he's one of my favourite people at the moment makes me laugh but she did something to the audience that, that they just loved but he's, yeah but that's the way I think Alan Carr is brilliant and that's just the way it goes you know and some nights are good and some nights are bad for some comics and that's 
really what keeps you on your toes because you can't always guarantee even if everyone says oh you're really funny have your own show you're the next best thing you still can't guarantee that someone else isn't going to come on and be twice as funny on the night and that's a good thing are they drunk you know all (laughs) those things is it more difficult going into a comedy store where people aren't necessarily coming for you than it is doing the Joe Brand show where they're actually paying good money to actually only see you oh absolutely much more difficult and and that's what's nice about kind of people coming to see you specifically is you've got that sort of reassuring blanket of of um, fans um, around the place whereas you know if they're not expecting it to be you sometimes you do get an audible sigh of disappointment when (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when you step on the stage, it's not really good for your confidence, that. When you're on these various quiz shows, and as I said earlier, it seems like you're the one they book when they need a lady that's guaranteed to be funny. You've done so many of them. Some of the guys on there kind of try and be funny. It doesn't always work. Is that because people know you now more than the others? Well, um, I don't know, really, because I, I don't think that even if people know who you are, it makes you any funnier. I think you just really have to keep working hard at it. And what what I think I do on that show that the others don't do is I just kind of stick my oar in occasionally with what I think is a very funny line. Whereas I think they're probably a bit braver than me because they keep waffling on endlessly in the vain hope that out of that will come something funny. And I, and I think that's a better way to approach it, really. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat. I like to have what I know is a good line kind of ready to splurge out. Mm. And that's certainly what you are, memorable, physically and, of course, with your comedy. (laughs) Now, how do I say this in a nice way, Joe? Don't say it in a nice way. Say it in the worst possible way you (sighs) think that you could. Well, I said to Dara O'Brien, there aren't many attractive comedians that are very, very funny. Does it help to have a curious face, let's say that? Curious. What a quaint phrase (laughs) or word, in fact. (laughs) Well, to be honest, I don't think it helps men or women to be hugely attractive because part of the the whole comedy persona is, as you say, either a downright ugly or a sort of slightly weird looking face or red hair, maybe. Alex well, I, is a help. I'm um, the first one to admit I'm physically repulsive and that's the way I have to try harder because nobody's going to want to talk to me for who I am, are they? I'm just trying to think of good looking comics. Rob Newman... Um, very good looking when he started and I don't think that helped him to be honest and I kind of know what women comics are good looking can you think of any? no no not really I think Gina Yashere is very nice looking actually do you not? yeah she is but she's kind of unique looking in, in terms of weight and stuff she's not in, in other words there's no Sharon Stones go on stage and get big laughs put it no, that way no you're absolutely right I went to the uh, Basic Instinct uh, film did you did you go to the premiere by the way? of course not and uh, what an opening that was and uh, <laughs> I didn't get through more than 10 seconds of it I saw a snatch of the film and it, it was very entertaining uh, let's talk Misses. about let, let's <laughs> it's as good as it gets let's talk about your touring procedure do you just turn up and do it much like doing the comedy store yeah and I really like the word procedure (laughs) to describe my touring no I get in a car with my mate Jez who drives me and we get there and we have a cup of tea and then I go on (laughs) is it very unpleasant I mean I don't see it being very glamorous theatres from the inside are great and you go and see these big productions you stand behind the curtain and you realise actually it's some of the most unpleasant environments to be in it's dirty and it's dark I mean I love doing theatres and they vary hugely in the degree of luxuriousness that's available to you some theatres have leather leather sofas tellies you know massage whereas others are just basically half a toilet open (laughs) to the wind and um, so you know you just don't know what you're going to get and it's quite exciting do you take them up on the massage no because mm. actually last time I had a massage on what was it on this morning this woman really hurt my neck <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing on this morning to get a massage or is well, it better I don't what, ask no that's what they supply now I think that's the like the neck you know the next great thing that's going to be offered on TV because normally they'll offer you a little bag to take home of goodies and then you know now they offer you on site spiritual and physical well that's fun gorgeousness I know it's not really fun so if you do like late night channel 4 or Al Jazeera or something do you get kind of sexual favours or something just get kicked in the privates on channel (laughs) 4 
Do you enjoy doing this side of what you do? I mean, if you could just go on tour and do your live comedy and then go home to the, the family and the kids, would that be better for you or do you actually quite like doing this kind of stuff? This sort of stuff we're doing now. Well, yeah, I do. It depends who it is. You, lovely, fine, no agenda. You know, sometimes it's kind of difficult because someone's come to the interview with very preconceived ideas about what I am. Normally, a kind of man-hating, radical feminist lesbian who takes no prisoners, which is so not what I am really. But so therefore, I have someone with an agenda who's kind of being quite quite nasty in a kind of underhand way, and that's not a great way to spend twenty minutes, really. Mm. I mean, maybe go for a lap dance or something in in the West End. We're very close. Exactly. Go back to school and have a teacher <laughs> bullying me. You know, <laughs> any of that would be preferable. <laughs> You mentioned there about your reputation. I think anybody who's seen you or watch you on TV will know that's not the case. But did you ever consider just doing nice jokes and not offending anybody? No, because I don't think nice jokes gets you anywhere. I mean, particularly as a woman. When I started and I did these kind of hard late night shows at the comedy store, I felt that I had to be four times more funny, noticeable bolshy sweary than the blokes or no one would take it seriously so um, much as I would have loved to have been because I I would like to have been a Victoria Wood because I think she's very clever she's she could do children's parties without getting beaten to death by the parents which I can't <laughs> um, but you know at the time and, and the, the sort of um, drunkenness you got at the kind of gigs that I did it just wasn't possible to be nice and talk about biscuits I've never actually seen a comedian booed off. Does it happen? Oh, it does happen, yeah. It's not, you know, it doesn't happen in a uniform way. It, it happens in a kind of rather sad, you know, one step forward, two steps back. They start to get a bit bored and someone shouts out, you're rubbish, you know what I mean? Momentum will build. And actually, I try and get off before that happens because what is the point of staying for them to all join as one and get you off? You might as well realise 10 minutes earlier and just get off. How does that work with the contract? Are you paid to turn up and start? You're not paid to do 20 minutes and finish? Well, it varies, actually. I think it depends on the discretion of the club owner or whoever it is you're doing it for. You know, I've no, I mean, I fell out with jonglers a very long time ago because I was being heckled by a group of very drunken dentists. And I can't even tell you what they were saying because it was so vile. And I just thought, this is not part of my job, you know, and I'm going to get off. And I got off two minutes early and I got told off for getting off two minutes early by the guy that ran Jonglers at the time. Mm. And I just said, well, I'm sorry, but you can stick your... You know, up and and, and, and um, never work there again. <laughs> and because I thought he was very unfair about that because no one could have put up with what I was putting up with. But, um, you know, I would, I would let hecklers give me a run for my money and I, everyone can assess what's appropriate in terms of how long you stay on. I spoke to Jim Davison once, and if it's true, it's the greatest story I've ever heard, that he did a working men's club uh, a few years back, and he was the big star going up there, and he walked on stage, and the language was so bad, he just went, I'm not a whore, good night, and walked off. I don't need your money. I mean, that's just great, isn't it? If you've got the, if you've just got the, the sensibility to do that. And I think that's that's a good thing to do. You know, you don't have to put up with like a really hideous kind of verbal mauling. It's a fine line, though, isn't to. it? Where where did the audience know that it's fun, and then it actually becomes offensive and real? It, it's difficult because it showbiz why you're on the stage, and perhaps some people think that you deserve it because you're being paid to be there. Yeah, but I think they should take our word for it, you know, because we've had the experience. I've had some absolutely appalling gigs in my time. And, you know, I have a base level by which I can judge it all. And I think audiences should just take your word for it. They're being awful if they are. I get to ask for people, and normally they say yes, because it's pretty big radio station, because I'm so envious of you in a way. Why don't you do it yourself then? Because I like doing it here, because yeah. I couldn't take that kind of criticism. I suppose it doesn't really happen these days in the theatres, but in the old days... Can you just walk away and go, it's a job? Because I couldn't. Well, I can. I mean, it does still happen to me these days because I do kind of a few of these corporate gigs, you know, and they never know um, before you come on who they're going to get. And sometimes I can just tell that they're thinking, oh, my God, you know, it's her. And sometimes I can turn it around and sometimes I can't, depending on the circumstances. And it is hard to walk out with your ego intact after after they've absolutely savaged you with their disinterest um but um you just learn to live with it really 
Oh, I couldn't. You could? No, life's too short. I don't need to be insulted. If I want that, I'll go and talk to the bosses. You, as a, as a comedian, have, have kind of changed female comedy because you were the first one that I kind of went, ooh, especially in this country, the Joan Rivers has kind of been shocking. There weren't many yes. women who were shocking. Are you glad you still did that? Because you have kind of changed, or have I just got used to you more? Um, do you think what become less shocking? Yeah, to me. But is that because I know you? Um, it may well be. I don't think I've particularly changed that much. Um, I think I've still got a bit of material in my set that's uh, slightly unpleasant. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's possible that I have mellowed a bit um, to include sort of elderly women as my <laughs> audience members. But actually, my theory about them is that elderly women are, are the ones that like the really, really rude stuff. Well, they've so. been through it, haven't they? Or at least Gladys and Fanny, their friends, have. Absolutely. And they've been desperate for years to break out and be a bit filthy and swear a lot. So, mm. uh, yeah. It's not very glamorous being a woman, really, is it? Let's be honest. Compared to... A ma- I get up in the morning, for example, and I go in the bathroom and have a pee, and then I brush my teeth and wash my face. I might do my hair if I'm meeting someone like you, and that's it. Two hours with the hair and the shaving of the legs. and the- Would you prefer to be a guy? No, um... Because um, I don't actually do all that stuff that normal women do. And I think you'll find that a lot of women don't. They just pretend they do when their cousin's there. Right. Um, (laughs) As soon as you've left, they're doing the two minutes that you do in the mornings. Right. So it's not true, really. It's not true. Okay. Women are slattens. I'm surprised you haven't <laughs> discovered that. Most of them can't be bothered. Well, the ones I sleep with, yes, but the ones that, are, that kind of try and impress me and stay with me, no. Well, the ones that are trying to impress you are doing all that stuff, aren't they? Just to impress you. I suppose. I suppose. I was. I was stupid enough not to be able to work it out. How are you enjoying the tour this time? Are you, is it good fun? Oh, it's great. And uh, I feel like I should touch wood a lot because every single gig I've done so far has been absolutely lovely. So yeah, really good fun. Why you? Why do you think people would actually pay their good earned money to come and see you? Well, I would hope um, because um, as there are so few women around, if you're a woman and you are in any way funny, you know, um, you offer other women a kind of very different evening from the sort of evening you're offered by a male comic. And I'm not saying that lots of women don't and should go to see male comics because obviously there's some brilliant ones around but I think hopefully I offer kind of an, a, just a very different sort of evening because I talk about things that are pertinent to women but the guys seem to come as well are they going I don't want to go and see that Joe Brand but secretively inside going actually she's quite funny well the, the I do get sort of damned with faint praise by a lot of men <laughs> who say oh you're quite funny which actually in their book means you're absolutely brilliant but there's no way I'm going to say it because you're a bird <laughs> so um, that's fair enough that does me the final question I want to ask you is about all these TV appearances I know you did commercial breakdown but as far as I'm aware you've never had the Joe Brand comedy show do you not want that or will they not give it to you? Well, I had three series on Channel 4. Actually, two on Channel 4 and one on BBC Two. And I can't even remember what it was called now. Head on Comedy, that's what it was called. And it, it, I was rather frustrated because you have to be slightly you know, less involved as the chair of something like that. And I don't think you can be quite so, quite so funny. So it just irritated me, really. Are you happy? No. Are you? Yeah, of course I'm happy. I wouldn't be out and about if I wasn't. Well, that's what I I like to know, because I do speak to comedians, and and most of them lately, actually, have been the ones that have gone, I'm happy. Maybe it's the older ones that are a little bit more tainted by it. Who's not happy, then? (laughs) You seem naturally funny and witty, and you've made me laugh, and blah, blah, blah. The the ones I... Julian Clare is a perfect example. I've never met a more serious man. I I adore him as a a comedian and as a performer, but I I, kind of don't get how you can be that funny on stage, yet so drastically different. And that, to me, is like a paradox. Why would you be like that? Surely comedy is about making yourself laugh, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, I think there's a very fine line between misery and comedy, really, because a lot of comedy is about how miserable things are. You know, it's about how bad the world is, what a pain in the neck most people are do you know what I mean it's about all those things so actually I think people that are depressed are quite entertaining I mean not in a psychiatric (laughs) nursing sort of way obviously (laughs) I'd like to stress that as I did but you know there's something about a very miserable deadpan comic like Jack D that that I think people love because they can identify with them Mm. 
It's like we said earlier, isn't it? Nobody wants to see a happy person with a wonderful life and a beautiful face telling you jokes. Exactly. It doesn't You're seem so to right. Work. Joe, it's really nice seeing you. I've put requests in for years and years and years, and I'm so glad you've come on. Uh, Request for what? To talk to Sexual you. Sexual favours. You'd be very welcome when I get divorced. Really? Well, I mean, how far off is that? I mean, do I have to apply 2020 or is it, you know, No, indefinite? further ahead than that. Really? I'd say about 2040 if I'm still around by then, which I doubt. Is it a happy life being married for you? Yes, thank you, Alex. Nice of you to ask. You see, this is the other thing. What's the point being on tour and not getting laid by the people who love you? Well, I just hire people when I'm out of town. No, actually, I come home every night. <laughs> But you didn't know that, did you? What, even when you're like Edinburgh? Don't go as far as Edinburgh, because I can't drive back in the night. I have a sort of 250-mile limit on my tour venues, and then I drive back every night. Well, I don't. Jez does. That is fascinating. And that presumably is for the kids and the family, purely. Yeah, indeed. And so I can get home and do some hoovering and baking overnight. You see, it's all an act, ladies and gentlemen. You can... <laughs> don't believe a word of it. She's under the thumb. Listen, <laughs> great to talk to you, Joe. And uh, thanks for coming on. If you want to go and find out more about Joe's tour, she's up and down the country, here, there and everywhere. And presumably this is one of those ongoing tours, really, because you've been doing it since middle of last year and you'll be doing it forever, will you? Yes, I will. I'll be on everywhere in the next 20 years, let's put it like that. I'm on in Dartford. There you are on Thursday. Thursday the 20th of April and I'm in Oxford on Sunday the 30th lovely www.offthecurb.co.uk is the website where you can find out more Joe Brand thanks for coming in thanks gorgeous